So welcome back everybody. Today I want to talk about simple skin lesion surgery, which is a very important topic in the current climate for a couple of reasons. Number one is over the last five years, I'm sorry to say that the NHS has withdrawn somewhat from treating simple skin lesions. Many of them are deemed purely for cosmetic purposes and as a result, due to a paucity of NHS funding, the NHS chooses no longer to treat these either in a GP setting, which is primary care or in a hospital setting. This leaves a large number of patients with difficulty around significant lumps and bumps, often on their face, which they can't get treated irrespective of whether the lesion itself causes concern regarding cosmetic appearance, body image, self-esteem or general psychological well-being. The other reason why skin lesions are highly important is because a small but significant number of them turn out to be skin cancer. Skin cancer is a very important topic in modern society. If you imagine I'm now 50 years old and my generation were amongst the first to go on regular summer holidays with package tours and flights. We didn't have much in the way of sun cream when we were younger and typically we got burned when we were in our late teens and early 20s. This sun damage has an additive effect and every subsequent exposure to strong sun increases our chance of skin cancer. My generation now being in their 50s are now reaping the rewards of all of that uncontrolled sun exposure when they were children. This means directly that the incidence of all varieties of sun-related skin cancer are going up every year. This is compounded by the fact that the population is becoming older and as a direct result we see that not only patients show up earlier with skin cancers but continue to have skin cancers throughout their life and this means often into their 80s and 90s. Skin cancer is obviously a very emotive subject because it has the word cancer attached to it and moreover these lesions often affect cosmetically sensitive areas of the body like the face and surgical treatment which is still the mainstay of treatment for the vast majority of skin cancers can be quite destructive leaving scars and some degree of deformity even when performed expertly. I therefore thought it was a worthwhile subject to discuss skin lesions in general with a specific section on skin cancer, how it can be treated in a plastic surgery setting and what you can expect from your treatment. So dealing with benign lesions first, the majority of lesions that we see affecting the face, body, arms and legs are benign. These often run in families like intradermal nevi or are things like seborrheic warts, are mild sun damage related lesions like seborrheic keratosis. Other lesions that present in younger life are things like lipomas, sebaceous cysts which can become infected and inflamed ingrowing hairs, pigmented vascular lesions like spider nevi, Campbell de Morgan spots, hemangiomas. I'm going to leave paediatric lesions to one side as this is not typically what we see in a private healthcare setting in the UK. These lesions are concerning as they sometimes grow and develop in a relatively short space of time. They are often cosmetically deforming, appearing commonly on the nose, the cheeks, the eyelids and around the mouth. They cause concern both from the way they look but also that the way they change. Patients will often report to their GP asking what a lesion might be. The GP will either take a look and give an opinion or refer on to a dermatologist if there's any doubt. But unfortunately, in the case where the lesion is deemed to be benign in nature, then it is unlikely that surgery will be offered on the NHS. This sadly doesn't help the patients in many cases as knowing it's benign is only half of the problem. Wanting it removed due to the cosmetic deformity is the other half. In our practice, we see maybe two or 300 of these lesions a year. The age distribution can be anywhere from 18 years old all the way up to 60s and 70s. When you come to clinic, we will examine the lesion in question, but also the surrounding skin, looking for skin quality, pigmentation, any presence of previous scars from surgery and the quality of those scars, general skin aging. And then we'll also go on to ask you about your general health medication that would cause concern around the time of surgery, allergies and occupation and pastimes which are relevant to your post-operative recovery. 
Depending on the type of lesion that we see, removal is almost always performed under local anaesthetic as an outpatient setting. This is something you can drive yourself to and from. The process involves photographs, signing of a consent form, accepting the risks, complications and process involved in surgery, planning of the surgery itself. Most of these lesions are removed by plastic surgeons specifically with the best cosmetic outcome in mind. This can be very different depending on the type of lesion. Lipomas and sebaceous cysts need to be removed through a linear scar as wide as the lesion itself. Things like intradermal nevi are removed with a minimal margin and a circular scar, which can then be closed in a tight purse string type closure. Skin tags are removed simply by shaving them off the skin, as are things like seborrheic keratosis or warts. Vascular lesions can be treated with surgery or laser. Our goal is to remove the lesion completely, and if there's any doubt, we may consider sending it to the lab for histological examination. Having said that, the vast majority of these lesions are characteristic in nature and we can be fairly confident as to what they are. The stitching and closure of the wound after removal, almost always in my practice, involves dissolving stitches and sticky tape steri-strips. The steri-strips stay on for between five and seven days and are shower-proof, but not sport or swimming-proof. The dissolving stitches are either under the skin or very fine and can be assisted in dissolving with some moisturizer after seven to 10 days. Problems include adverse scarring, which may not be something that you know about in your history, stretching of scar tissue, which can be common in people who make weak collagen. Again, this is something we'll ask about in your history, but it's not always apparent, especially in people who've never had surgery like this before. Infection is rare. Infection and wound complications are specifically more of a problem in elderly patients, surgery on the lower extremity, and in patients who smoke or are diabetic. Overall, I'm pleased to say that more than 95% of the minor lesions that we remove have an excellent cosmetic outcome with very little need for additional follow-up or additional care. In the 5% that remain, we sometimes need to add in something like steroid injections for lumpy scars, silicone-based dressings for lumpy raised pink scars, or very occasionally in the case where scars stretch, we sometimes have to perform revision of the scar to hopefully attain a better overall result. It's very important to accept and understand that in all skin types, the recovery period is typically six months at least. It takes this long for the scar tissue to form, to stiffen, and then to start to soften and fade. The key concerns when judging the quality of a scar are its width, its color, and its contour. Some of these are person or patient specific, and some of these can be improved by secondary treatment but we have to bear in mind that better is not always possible if good is what we have. If you believe you have a skin lesion specifically on the face, but anywhere on the body which is cosmetically sensitive to you, then please get in touch with us here at adamgoodwinsurgery.com. We will happily see you for a free consultation, or if you would prefer, then you can send us a photo. And we'll be able to give you some idea of the process of removal via email to give you some information and costings ahead of your visit. We make it a practice policy of seeing every patient face to face before we perform an operation and we can see you as many times as you like in order to answer any questions that you have. Just for completeness, there is a whole range of slightly more complex lesions, things like hand lesions, which include ganglia, tendon cysts, bony spurs, and also other lesions on the body, which include swelling from deeper structures like hernias. These are not something that this talk is designed to cover, but if you have a lump of any description, then by all means get in touch and we'll be able to give you some insight as to what we think it might be and what treatment would be involved in order to improve things for you. Turning to skin cancer, skin cancer is, as we mentioned, a difficult problem for many people aged over 50 in Great Britain, as we are often fair skinned and have had significant exposure to the sun as youngsters. Skin cancers related to sun exposure come in three main types. They are essentially mild, moderately severe and severe variety, which are BCCs as the mildest version SCC as the moderately severe version and melanoma as the most severe version of skin cancer that we see in the UK. 
There are a few other much rarer varieties of skin cancer, but again, if you have any lesion that you're concerned about, then get in touch with us or your GP and ask your questions. The type of skin cancers we specifically are expert at treating in private cosmetic surgery practice are the BCCs or the lesions that might be BCCs. Classically, BCCs arise on fair or pale skin, on the face, chest and arms of men, or on the face, chest and lower legs of women. These are typically the areas most exposed to the sun when we're younger through middle age. They develop as typically small, round, shiny nodules, or very occasionally bleeding and crusting nodules. They grow slowly and so often have been present for many years before you seek help from a doctor. In my experience, they tend to double approximately every two years and so can go unnoticed for some time when small. These lesions often occur around the eyes, nose, mouth and face and the mainstay of treatment is surgical excision. For completeness, there are alternative treatments like light therapy, radiotherapy, and there is a complex surgical treatment called Mohs and micrographic surgery. These treatments are of varying success, effectiveness, but also varying availability. And in my experience, surgical excision with expert planned reconstruction is a very satisfactory way to remove these lesions, giving the best cosmetic outcome. If you seek a consultation regarding one of these lesions, then again, we will discuss how long it's been there, how quickly it's grown, are there any signs like bleeding or crusting, do you have a history of a sun exposure, specifically do you have a history of any lesions like this in the past that have been treated surgically or non-surgically, do you have any history of skin cancer or sun-related problems in the family, and also your personal history medical history, allergies, and job and pastimes. If we think that it is possible that your lesion might be a BCC, but not highly likely, then we may recommend a tiny biopsy. This removes only a two millimeter core from the center of the lesion and confirms the diagnosis of BCC or benign lesion. This has a smaller fee, but we will advise you that in many cases, if the lesion is confirmed to be a mild skin cancer, then additional treatment will be necessary. With experience over nearly 20 years of surgery practice, including BCC treatment, we become well practiced in spotting what lesions are likely to be BCCs, and we will discuss this with you at your clinic appointment. If we agree that we think this could well be a BCC, then we often go directly to complete removal and immediate reconstruction. The process of removal will again involve consent photographs, drawing and planning of the removal and reconstruction. We will then inject some local anesthetic in a way that minimizes the pain and discomfort as much as possible. The removal of the lesion is typically a completely painless experience once the anesthetic has taken effect and can take anywhere between 15 and 40 minutes depending on the reconstruction involved. Again, stitches are typically dissolvable, reinforced with sticky suture strips. These can be removed at one week and you can shower, wash your hair and go about your daily activity immediately after surgery. Just refrain from extreme physical exercise, sweating and swimming. We invariably send suspicious lesions to the histology lab for them to analyze under the microscope. They will give us a description. The description falls into one of three broad categories, namely number one, a benign lesion, no further treatment required. Number two, a BCC, completely removed, therefore no further treatment required. Or in about two to 5% of BCC cases, we see BCC potentially incompletely removed. This is an unfortunate byproduct of primary removal and reconstruction, and is something that we will discuss in detail before your surgery. There are a number of options if the third outcome is the one that affects you, and we will discuss these should this be the case, but rest assured this is a, by far the rarest of the three pathological diagnoses that we see. Reconstruction is designed to fall in the natural skin creases of the face, so following the nasolabial lines, marionette lines, 
mental crease or the creases of the nose or eyelid. We can therefore guarantee that we will make your reconstruction as neat as we possibly can, but unfortunately there will be an inevitable scar and certain people don't necessarily make perfect scars and this is something we will also counsel you about before surgery. Once a BCC is completely removed and then there is no need for additional treatment, be aware that 50% of patients who have a BCC will experience another one within five years and therefore you should be both extra vigilant looking out for new lesions that slowly grow and be extra careful in the sun using factor 30 or factor 50 on any sun exposed areas If we suspect one of the more serious skin cancers, namely SCC or melanoma, then at most we will offer a biopsy to confirm. The biopsy will only be a small part of the lesion and will in no way represent definitive treatment. But once the diagnosis is confirmed, then we will refer you on to a local NHS hospital for expert care. The signs to look out for for SCCs are rapidly growing, bleeding, crusting or ulcerating lesions in the same sun exposed areas in men and women as we have already discussed. The signs of melanoma are slow growing, darkly pigmented lesions, again typically but not universally in sun exposed areas in men and women. The classic signs are irregular outline, fast growing, larger than five millimeters in diameter, multicolored. If you have a pigmented lesion with any of these signs associated with it, then please get in touch with your GP or send us a photo here at Adam Goodwin Surgery and we would be more than happy to give you our best advice. Overall, satisfaction from skin lesion removal is very high. Many patients choose not to come back and see us as there are no concerns about the wound or the way the scar has healed. For that small group of patients, approximately 10% who have had issues either with healing, with infection, or with the way the scar has settled, then we will do everything we can to make the scar as good as possible and the overall result as neat as possible. Sometimes means additional surgery, but often means waiting some additional time, applying some silicone or some steroid injection to soften and improve the scars. Scars ultimately can take many months to arrive at their final healing point and everything should be done to try and speed our way to this point rather than do additional surgery unless necessary. If you have a lesion that you are concerned about from the way it has developed or simply that you don't like the way it looks, then please get in touch with us here at Adam Goodwin Surgery. We would happily have a look at your photos and arrange a free consultation and discuss both your options if there are surgical and non-surgical, as well as the process of removal if that's what you choose to do.